Hi everyone, my name is Sally and I'm a music leader for the Urban Vocal Group. I'm also a singing and voice teacher and I specialise in contemporary and commercial technique. Um, today I want to talk to you about range. Now, a lot of people come to me with, with issues within their range and they come to me um, talking about how they don't like the sound of their voices in different parts of their range. Now, I want to talk to you today about something called tessitura, okay? And tessitura is basically pretty much a, a fancy Italian word for your sweet spot of your singing voice. Now, within our voice, we have our range. So I'm a mezzo, which means that I'm a middle voice, a middle female voice. And my, my notes tend to sit comfortably between the G below middle C, up the octave and up the octave again. So that's from G, G3 to G5. Now, when I'm singing, I want to keep most of my songs within that range to keep my voice safe. Anything out of that may cause me issues, okay? Um, I'm gonna make a video next week about voice types and seeing where your voice should be sitting and we'll do some exercises to try and work that out together. So, um, but today I want to talk to you about the importance of knowing where you should be sitting within your voice and what you should be looking for. Now, within our range, now our range is the lowest notes we can sing to the highest notes we can sing. And it doesn't have to be pretty, you know, your range is just those notes that are coming out. Our tessitura is where our voice sits nicely. Now, like I said, I sing from G to G to G most comfortably. Um, because of technique and because I sing in contemporary styles, my voice can take me lower than that and, and higher than that, so I can sing as high as a soprano and as low as an alto, but it doesn't necessarily mean that my voice wants to stay there for very long. I can do that with technique and I can do that with um, looking after my voice and strengthening my voice, but it doesn't necessarily want to sit there. And voice types are really, really important because if you're not sitting in your voice type and you're not singing the songs for your voice type, it's not necessarily going to be sounding as great as it could be. And I want you to bear that in mind. And like I said, join me the next week for the video and we're gonna find out which of your voice types that you are. What I want you to start thinking about today though, is the songs that you're working on and how hard or how easy they feel. Now, we said about tessitura and that is your sweet spot. It is a really, really odd thing to do to start looking at tessitura because most of the time we don't necessarily sit and analyze our voices, you know, unless we've kind of got someone there and we're working with a teacher and someone's saying, right, what does that feel like? How does it sound? What are you looking for? So I want to give you some of the things to look out for within your voice. Your tessitura will sit in right, usually right in the middle of your voice, and this is a spot where everything sounds naturally a little bit louder, stronger, more tuneful, everything just sounds great and feels great. You know when you have those days when you pick these songs up and they sound amazing, and then other days they don't sound so great. The, the songs that sit in your tessitura will sound great the majority of the time, okay? And that is often something that's not too high or too low. When you're working with range, remember your, your voice is a muscle, and range can be grown, but our range is actually predetermined by our accent. It's predetermined by how we've been singing. It's, um, and I mean like through years of years of singing and years of um, practice. Um, our ethnicity has a, has a major um, impact in our, our larynx size and the position within our throat, um, our environment, the people that have brought us up and who have taught us to speak. So if you are raised in, um, in, a, in a household where there's predominantly females and you are a male, you might end up having more of a lighter and brighter voice. Whereas if you are a female and you've been raised in a more male dominated household, you might have a deeper and darker tone to your voice. And that is all to do with um, environment and hearing things and the same things happen when we are singing certain songs from a young age so I had this um this thing of probably about um over the last hmm, well how long have I been around um four or five years like however long little mix has been around that I have had an influx of seven and eight year olds that come and study with me with voice problems because they have been trying to sing little mix and little mix keep their voices really, really low and very, very dark. And what happens is all of these children that are trying to sing along to them, they end up pushing their voices down and they end up being able to sing much lower than, than adults can and they end up hurting themselves because of it. So that's another way to think about it is that actually our range may be predetermined by things that we have sung before. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's safe and it doesn't necessarily mean that it's something that I want you to continue on doing if you're noticing any bad habits creep in. So if you are feeling within your voice that you have, um, when you're singing low, that you're getting like a uh, 
come into your voice, which is called fry, that is an indication that you're taking your range far, far too low. And if you're taking that range low, you're gonna to start to edge away at your vocal folds and the friction is gonna build up and it's gonna cause some issues. It is just as dangerous as if you were singing too high. Now, if you are singing very, very high and you're getting lots of tightness creeping and you're getting lots of um, kind of that friction again, because it, it works in both sides of your voice, you are still going to be kind of causing yourself issues and things aren't going to sound as what, good as what they can be. So what I want you to do is I want you to go and I want you to find your songs that you know that you feel good at no matter how you're feeling. And that will probably be sat in your tessitura, okay, so your sweet spot. There's two types of tessitura, if you've, if you've heard that word before, but not in this way. Um, there's tessitura within music, which says um, the range of the lowest to the highest note that will be played by the orchestra or whoever's playing the music because um, it's more of a classical term, um, but within your voice, it is to do with your sweet spot. The reason why I want you to go and explore where your voice sounds its best and work on um, really, really staying within that area is because it's going to make sure that your voice stays healthy and actually able to sing for a long amount of time. If you've got a lot of songs within your set, you will be working through and you probably will only be able to sing um, a couple of songs if they are out of that, that sweet spot. Okay, so if a lot of your songs are pushing your high notes and you feel, feel really tired after you've been singing maybe one or two songs, then that's an indication that you need to look at the keys. Now I'm going to talk to you a little bit about keys because it's a bit of an odd, odd subject and um, it stresses a lot of people out and it can be really quite simple and a lot of you may have already found on YouTube there are um, a lot of backing tracks that come in female keys or higher key or lower key and that is a good place to start if you if you find a song that you love but it is not within your sweet spot okay and it's not in a good spot for your voice and what I want you to do is if things feel grating really low and you're like putting a lot of effort and you feel like you have to push down to get there you want to be looking at bringing the song up now a lot of people as soon as they start to play around with keys, they open up parts of their voice that they didn't know existed. So I'm gonna really, really push you to go and actually look at changing keys of songs in order to make things work better for you. A lot of people don't like changing keys, they're worried about it changing the song and changing the emotion, and changing the feeling. But this is a fundamental way that as singers, we can still sing the songs we love and maintain our voice, okay? And it's that sound the best. Why would you wanna sing a song that's far too high, far too low for you and sound rubbish when you can actually put it into a good key and sound amazing, okay? And it can sometimes be the difference of, have you ever um, ever been singing, you go, and you ask someone, or like, how does it sound? And they go, yeah, it's fine, you know? And you go, well, is it fine? Is it good? Is it? And they go, yeah, it's fine. And you don't really get a reaction. Whereas you get some songs that go, that was amazing, that was incredible. And I'm gonna tell you, those songs that they feel that it was amazing, or when you've watched other people sing, those songs that are amazing will be sitting in that sweet spot. Okay, because when, when your voice is in that sweet spot, it's warmer, it's stronger, it's louder, it's more effortless, and it just wants to work so much better for you. Now, how can you find your sweet spot? Now, it's very difficult without working with someone one-to-one, -one, and when I do the um, voice types videos next week, we'll talk more about where your voice will be in particular. But for this week, what I would like you to do is go and find some songs that you feel really good at right now, and you can start to play around with changing keys. Now, there are a couple of apps you can get that pitch shift, um, but some of them are paid, so so I don't really want to recommend them unless you feel like investing and you comment in the um, video below and let me know. But there is, um, there's an add-on for Chrome if you've got a desktop computer or, or a laptop or a Mac or anything. And um, there are a couple and there's one called a Pitch Shifter, I think Pitch Shifter HTML. And there is another one called Cadenza. And you can go and just type into Google Pitch Shifter add-on for Chrome, you know. And what you will do is it will download something that will allow you to pitch shift videos in YouTube. And you can go on there and you can move them up and down and actually sing songs. They, sound, they don't sound great, they sound a bit rubbish. But what it is, is a good practice tool for you to figure out what key songs need to be in for you. You can also get um, from Karaoke Version, which is a website that a lot of people get their backing tracks from you can actually go in and pick um three or four different keys so if you if you purchase that backing track you then have the option to get it in four or five different keys and that is really really helpful now like i said it's kind of a bit of a, a vague video um but at the same time with lots of information that is going to maybe confuse you so if you've got any worries or any questions about this please let me know but i want you to start thinking about are you picking songs that are safe for your voice? And are you picking the songs that are actually flattering you and making you sound the best that you can? Because if you are straining and if you are pushing or pulling on any of these high notes or low notes, 
you're not going to get the best out of your voice and after a while you're going to end up needing to come see someone like me who's going to have to help you recover your voice and rebuild and retrain your voice altogether so don't be that person who is singing the songs that are more damaging to them than they are good okay so go and look at the songs and a lot of the times we know we know if it's not comfortable we know if it doesn't feel right but sometimes we don't necessarily know if it feels good. So I want you to start paying attention to your body and I kind of call it like a, doing a full body scan as you're singing, going through and going, right, does this feel tight? Does this feel like I'm working too hard? Do I feel like I'm losing my breath? Now, your range will be predetermined already and different techniques can help you to get higher and lower. So don't write off every song straight away, but I want you to gravitate yourself towards all the songs that are really easy. I lost my breath then. So gravitate all the way to your songs that you feel much more um, confident in and that you feel more, more comfortable within your voice and within your throat because that is going to make a massive difference to your audience. People don't want to sit and watch you strain through high notes just because you think they're going to be impressive. And one of my lectures when I was at, um, at college, I remember him saying to me, he said, um, don't pick a high and more powerful and kind of Larry song and, and do it bad. He said, pick an easy song for your voice and completely slay it, you know? And that is what you need to start thinking of, is you need to, I don't think you would have said slay back then actually, that's more of a more of a naughty thing. But what I want you to start thinking of is that it's all about you being the best singer you can be for your voice. And remember your voice is kind of like your natural hair color, you know, your natural hair color, your natural height, you know, your foot size. It's something that we can't necessarily go and make drastic changes to, you know? So you've got to kind of learn to embrace yourself and embrace your voice and start working from where your voice wants to work from. Because if you do want to extend your range, you do want to extend higher or lower within your range, you need to first start by getting your comfortable middle voice, your tessitura, your sweet spot, really, really solid, okay? And if you are struggling with most of your songs, then we may need to look at keys if you definitely don't wanna give them up. If you can't find songs that suit your voice and you're worried about that, then send us a message at UVG and we will be here to help you find something that will suit you, okay? Let me know if you've got any worries or any questions. Stay tuned for next week, and that'll be uploaded at six o'clock next Wednesday, um, for our video on voice types and this is going to show you how to pick what voice types you should be sitting in and this will also be to do with what voice types you should be sitting in for um, UVG as well within your, your correct voice placements and I'm going to do some exercises to talk you through and actually help you to start finding what you should be doing with your voice and where you should be but for now go and listen to some of your songs and feel whether you feel that that is within your sweet spot or whether you feel that that is going into your danger zone so you're higher or lower perhaps okay Hope to see you next week and have a really, really good singing week and I'll see you soon. Bye.